Hello everyone, Justin here from Royal Botanical Gardens and I just wanted to say that the biodiversity in this planet is nothing but incredible. Even here in RBG's nature sanctuaries, there is a lot of biodiversity. We have a variety of habitats that are filled with plants and animals that are adapted to thrive in those specific environments. Now, there is a never-ending list of cool adaptations that I could talk about, but today I wanted to focus on our feathered and furry friends that like to spend a lot of their time out in the water. Now, as you might know, swimming can be very wet and very cold, and that can pose a lot of problems. So how do the animals that are constantly swimming do it without any problems. Now, humans, we've made clothes to help us stay warm and dry, and these clothes kind of mimic what the animals have too. So I have an inside layer that's very soft and poofy to keep me warm. And if I'm worried about getting wet, maybe it's gonna rain, I would put on an outer layer that is very shiny, my rain jacket, that's going to keep my warm layer nice and dry. So let's have a look at a beaver pelt to see how it is kind of similar to my jackets. So here I have a beaver pelt. And when we look closely at it, on the outside you can see those nice shiny uh, hairs. And on the inside there is going to be very, very soft, fluffy hairs that are going to keep the beaver warm. Now, birds, they aren't going to have hair, but their feathers are going to be very similar. They're going to have a very fluffy inner layer of feathers called down that's going to keep the bird warm. And then their much larger outside feathers are going to help keep the bird dry. Now, these animals, their outer layers aren't going to keep them dry on their own. So how do they do it? Well, these animals are going to cover themselves in oil before they go into the water. And that oil coating their outer fur or their outside feathers is going to help that water run right off their backs. Let me show you how this works. So here I have a jar of water and I'm going to add a bit of oil to it. And we can pretend that maybe this is a pond and the oil is a duck that is going to swim in the pond. You can see as I add the oil, the two do not mix. So this is how these animals stay dry. The water that touches them and the oil that is on their feathers stay apart and repel each other. No matter how much I try to mix these together, they are going to stay apart. So now using this idea that oil and water stay apart, we can make a little bit of a lava lamp. So what you'll need is a jar that's mostly full of oil, some colored water, and an antacid tablet. So the way that this works is you're going to add a little bit of your colored water to your container or jar of oil. And you can see how the water makes these bubbles on the bottom. Then what you're going to do is take some small pieces of your antacid tablet. So you might need to break it up. And you're gonna drop those down on the inside of your jar. Now you might need to add a bit more water depending on how it looks. And as those tablets dissolve, all of those colored balls of water are going to float and sink. And you have yourself a very cool lava.
So, some birds will want to stay dry while they go swimming, but other birds might not. The double-crested cormorant, which likes to nest out on our Hickory Island, is a type of bird that doesn't have as much oil as the ducks and the swans and the loons. So when they go diving, they're actually going to get very wet. Now, this helps them stay underwater while they hunt for the fish. But it also means that when they come out, they, you'll sometimes see them standing with their wings out wide, trying to dry off their feathers. So next time you go exploring outside, I encourage you to think about and appreciate all the amazing characteristics that help animals survive out in nature. So I hope you enjoyed this video and for more videos, you can go and visit rbg.ca slash at home. And until next time, thank you for watching and happy exploring.